Ladies and gentlemen, for me, it's a huge privilege to introduce to you today uh, Alicia Grunling, both in a personal capacity as well as in my capacity as a director of Miklot, as we know it, and as a donor. Um, we've known each other for about 20 years. Firstly, through my involvement with her as an attorney, and I helped her with the structures of JEPSA, an initiative that she, she took off the ground way back. Um, and then, but mostly for her work as CEO of Meklat. Um, she will tell you what Meklat does. Let me try and tell you how she does it. Um, when we read the scriptures, um, and specifically, specifically now during the Advent period, we tend to glamorize um, the birth of Jesus. Um, and we tend to forget that it actually revolved around a baby born in a manger, because nobody else was prepared to, to accommodate him. His parents fleeing state-sanctioned genocide, actually. And him spending most of his time with lepers, with prostitutes, with tax collectors, and the downtrodden. Which is in contrast to the sanitized version that the world tried to give us. It's there, right there, in the everyday life, where Jesus comes low down to meet us, and that's where you'll find Alicia and the work that she does for Meklat. Living and serving humbly, being there in people's grief and suffering and joys, where she acts as an agent of love resembling Jesus. The prayer, thy kingdom come, thy will be done as it is in heaven, or on earth as it is in heaven rather, finds application in the work she does and is instrumental in doing. I've never seen her waver in her commitment, not once. Not when the money ran out and there were no money for operations, let alone for her own salary. Not when the forces of darkness tried to, to stand between us and Meklat and, and doing the work that, that Meklat does. And not even really once when the gang war started around us and bullets were flying. She will not waver. And she always smiles the way she does now. I didn't even have to look. Ladies and gentlemen, I have a true, it's a true honor to present to you Alicia Grunler. Good afternoon. My name is Alicia Grunler, and here is God's story. I was born on a wine farm in a loving, privileged family, and um, I fell in love with our country's people. Uh, from a young age, my father encouraged me to, to take on leadership roles in, uh, on the farm and um, just manage the farm workers' wives. And my passion um, grew when my grand grandfather predicted that one day his grandchildren will um, um, transform our country and have the calling of a, a reconciliation. And I took that as a self-fulfilling prophecy for me. I always had this urge for for um, the, the people um, less fortunate than me. And um, I was fortunate to find the kindred spirit in Oki Grinling, my, my husband whom I married in 1986. And he was um, uh, working at uh, constitutional development in Pretoria. We, um, he planned the unbanning of the ANC and the uh, releasing of Mandela. And in 1999, I received my calling and I knew that I had to facilitate reconciliation on grassroots level. And I started a, a bakery called Chepsa, Jesus Peace South Africa. That was for the uh, 16 unemployed people. And I gave them um, ownership of this bakery. And in 2008, I joined MCM, um, a Christian non-profit company, and I established a food center there. And um, that was special because we fed 5,000 children every day. And currently, we feed 45,000 children in the Drakenstein um, area and in creches who are not registered at the Department of Social Development. Um, so Monte Cristo Miklat um, is a non-profit company. And the vision is building peaceful, sustainable families. We have four focus areas. The, the first focus area is MCM um, Sport Park and the, the um, nutritional program, and then the Tiffany's Community Center and the Full Circle uh, program. In 2016, the barbarian gang ruled Paul East. 
shootings were an everyday occurrence, and even um, the police were scared of entering the a area. A mother's parent relationship were broken, um, and um, the, the kids were just all over the, the place. And um, we knew that um, something had to be done to break the tide of violence. No one felt safe in the area. So our staff, and with much prayer, made a plan. We invited the gangs into the center's gym for an hour every day, and we fed them. And with full tummies, they didn't want to, to um, make a war anymore. And after six months, the violence declined. This gave us hope, and we... Um, we uh, arranged the screening of the film New My Schooly and um, about John Friedrich's life. And he was a gangster and he was in prison for many years and he watched the movie with him. The 37 barbarians then listened to his story and after that they uh, decided to quit the barbarian gang. Uh, we saw that the, uh, the um, transformation um, was, was now very... Um, active here in, in um, Pole East. And um, so, uh, the fighting and the friction between the gangs actually stopped. And um, we also saw that mothers acted like mothers again. And um, we also saw that um, the, the uh, barbarians started to change their lives and they, they wanted to transform. Um, with uh, John Friedrichs as our ambassador, we started the MCM Drama and Creative Writing School for the Youth at, at Risk. And we've we um, actually found a platform for them where they can be creative, and they were between the ages of 12 and 24. And this was very, very um, transformative for them. They started to write their own stories and, um, of rejection and pain and suffering and a search for identity. And we took the best stories and, and compiled and published it in the book form. And they sold each 20 copies of their own book. And they made them authors of their own book and also um, very proud of being an, an entrepreneur now. So the budding writers um, then wrote a, a, a drama about the, the blood-soaked um, piece of land where they uh, previously uh, fought. Um, and um, it was called um, Rueland, Red Land, uh, where the blood uh, f uh, was uh, uh, fled. So uh, um, they actually uh, won the, the best text competition at the drama competition. And these guys n um, are actually positive role models because they acted at Poland College where Oki is lecturing. They acted at schools. And today there is peace in the, com in the reintegrated community. Um, the, the, um, the kids went back to school and some of the guys um, went to Boland College and um, the, the dropouts decided to paint the walls of Tiffany's, our community center, and no one dares to deface the artistic expressions. Uh, Tiffany's is a place of, of hope and peace and um, this is the pivot around which all community transformation turns. And we are, we are very thankful for what God did in this area because it was hard won a peace that we now sustain. And how do we sustain it? We have an after-school program, um, and currently we need, in short term, we need um, volunteers to assist in the after-school program. We uh, need mentorships for the youth at risk and um, because they don't have father figures who love them and really cherish and, um, and um, adore them. Um, our current need is the, the funding for our uh, Tiffany's Community Center um, because um, it must adhere to the specifications of the Occupational Health and, and Safety Act and also the fire prevention regulations. Um, and we are registered at the Department of Social Development and our registration is subject um, to the, um, the, the renovation of the building. And the cost will be 1.3 million. So um, our long-term vision is to build a skills training center and a business park for the youth at risk um, to, to get sustainable jobs. Um, and we know that um, in Paul East, it is a huge um, need now. So our uh, future is, we built a sustainable future in Paul East. Um, a, a beautiful place where the, the youth at risk can feel they are loved, there's peace and fulfillment. And we believe that this model can be duplicated in many uh, places in South Africa who are poverty-stricken and gangster-ridden. Thank you so much.
Alicia, very impressed by your resume. Um, I love it that your slogan says, we assist in building peaceful, sustainable families. I yes. like the word sustainable. And I think it shows with the amount of years that MCM has been um, working in the communities. Yes. 19 years. Yeah. That's credibility as well, eh? Yes. Next year we are having our 20th birthday, so we're very, very excited. So I quickly <laughs> went and I visited your, e um, your website. Uh, a couple of things that I did pick up. In the 19 years, you build an amazing organization. A thousand meals per annum. Is it a million meals or a thousand? A million. A million, a million meals, meals per annum? Yes. A million meals per annum. Let's just quickly say that again. Yes. That's a lot of meals. 80 job opportunities per week. Yes, for the homeless. 54 kids in daycare. Doesn't stop there. 164 ECD crashes that you look after per month. Yes. 225 kids in after-school classes. Yes. One toy library. It doesn't stop there. You've got 200 gym users. Yes. You've got 60 adult parental development courses. Yeah. 2,500 kids using um, the parks. The, sp the sport park. Is it like a sport park? Yes. And then last but not least, you've got three soccer teams that you also manage. Yes. How do you do it, woman? <laughs> um, the way that we do it is um, that we divided MCM into four focus areas. And th that makes management very easy. Because uh, the first focus area, if I can start with Tiffany's community center, where we host then the daycare center and the after school um, uh, program, and then also the um, MCM Drama and Creative Writing School. So this is a fantastic hub because it's in the gangster ridden area and um, it is so well placed. God really just placed it there with a purpose because that is why I focus today only on how, how God made, made peace in Paul East. Because if you, if you take the, the, the families, the families were disintegrated. There were no father uh, figures. Actually, most of the families don't have father figures. And um, that makes life so difficult because these kids come into our center and they don't have any um, values or respect. You know? And that's basic stuff that we have to teach them. So Tiffany plays a major role that building um, in that gangster-ridden area. Now you're, very, you're speaking about budgets and you're very specific. Please, if you look at a presentation for uh, uh, way at the bottom, the projected, it's literally a million and nine hundred and forty-nine two nine zero. You are so by the sense, by the rand, by. Yes. It's not just an overview. No. It's this is what we need and this is the projection. Yeah. If people ask you if they want to give you a donation, small, medium and large, what would it be? Small will be to feed the, the children in the after-school program every afternoon. So that will be 150 rand per month per child. And then we give them a sandwich or um, a cooked meal um, when they come to do their homework. The medium will be, we are really in, in need for um, the 1.3 million to um, upgrade the Tiffany's Community Center because we are provisionally um, registered at the Department of Social Development and if we do not comply to those regulations that I've stated um, then we will um, you, um, lose our registration with the department and currently we get 20,000 rand per month um, from the department which helps me to pay our four ECD uh, um, teachers. And then um, large will be the skills training center and um, the, the, the uh, business park for, for the youth at risk. Let's put a number to that large number. 1.3 million. Is that your large number? Um, I'm not sure what the, the skills training center will cost. I didn't do um, a QS. Yes. Okay, now we know. Thank you so much. Thank you.